Hey everyone, James Labrie from Dream Theater, and you're listening to or watching the podcast Talking Into Infinity with JT and Brian. Enjoy this. These guys are extremely informative. I love their dialogue. I love their interpretation of the songs, who and what we are, what we were going after. They're very uh, accurate in their uh, interpretations and descriptions. And uh, just I just think this is a great show. And these guys are doing a, a stand-up stellar job. So once again, enjoy Talking Into Infinity with JT and Brian. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Talking Into Infinity, a Dream Theater-centric podcast. I am your host, John. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, TalkingIntoInfinity.com, the CMSNetwork.com, and the CMS Network Rumble page. We are live at those five locations every other Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to click that like button, click that subscribe button, and smash that notification bell so that you are notified every time we go live. Without further ado, let me bring on my amazing friend. Well, it's not really, not really an amazing friend, uh, and my co-host. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a minute to bring Brian on. I'm gonna steal his thunder. So, uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, yes. I'm growing my hair out, and it looks goofy. I don't have a hat on. It looks silly. So before Brian can get in here and shit on me, I figured I would uh, completely take the joke away from him. So here's Brian. Take that, you bastard. It's it's so exciting. We have our first uh, sponsor, Best Cuts. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the opposite of Best Cuts is. <laughs> it sucks as it cuts. It certainly does suck. <laughs> you know when you go in there and there's there's like you're wanting a new hairstyle and, and they have like those pictures and you're looking at them. This would be like your pic. This is the one I don't want. They're going to point at that. <laughs> it's the before. <laughs> right? Well, hey, dude, no, like... if, you're, if you're trying to get a job cleaning restrooms at a men's prison, that's perfectly the look I'd be going for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be brutally honest with you. And we are off and rolling on talking. We are. <laughs> see, no, look. I... See, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doug told Totally gets it. Doug McCauley, good to see me. He says, ah, John's in the shit stage of the grow out. That's brutal. See, he understands. I just, just, I put some product in it. I mess it up. I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to work, dude. Like, you know. Yeah, uh, but that's, that's sort of falsely implies it's going to get a whole lot better. And let's not fool up. ourselves. Look, man, the, the, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> look, you can't polish this turd. Real quick, let's get Sam Mathis in here because he says he can't stay. But uh, Sam, thanks for tuning in for a second. Uh, he says, can't stick around for the live show. Just wanted to pop in and say that I really enjoy repentance and ministry of love. Yeah, Lost. right. Catch you guys later. Have a good evening. Like we're <laughs> buying that uh, scenario. And the Troll of the Night Award goes to Sam Mathis. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So um, a couple couple quick things here that uh, kind of happened to me this week. When, uh, you know, obviously the hair is a goof, but um. Yeah, it's it's been a fun week for me, dude. So I kind of wanted to throw some things out there on a personal level. I know a couple months ago I had a downer episode, so I figured I would start out with some positive stuff. Um, I got a big raise at work this week. Uh, I got I got head hunted. The head hunted. There we go. And um, the, I let my company know that somebody else wanted me. They had made me a very big offer, and my company went wait, 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 and they counter offered, and it was fair. And so, uh, and basically to a person, all executive management was like, we need to keep you. So it was cool, man. Like everyone said, yeah, you're doing good. And I got more money, which is awesome. And so that was good. And then last night I, I started kind of like a passion pet project. It's just a test, but I've always wanted to do voiceover work. I always thought that'd be kind of like a fun side hustle. And I've always been interested in audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks like crazy. And so I was like, you know what? I was reading uh, Stephen Rosen's Tone Chaser book again, uh, and I, I, you know, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record a chapter of an audio book and see how it goes. So I did that last night. Boy, does that take way longer than you think it would. But I have a short little chapter of an audio book that I recorded, and I was listening to it on the way to work, and it was actually much better than I thought it would be. So it's kind of an exciting week around here, and you know, as you can tell from my background, it's uh, the twelfth hole at Augusta National. So the Masters is next week, so I'm off most of the week. And uh, it's just a good, good old, good old time around here. So, figured I'd spread some good vibes. So your your company 
I got the exact opposite treatment. So I got I got paid a really healthy amount of money not to ever work there again. <laughs> right. For you, like, you, you got the sweeter deal. <laughs> for like seven months, and I'm still getting it. So I don't, I don't <laughs> right. know if that says more about me or more about you. I, I really don't know. But and that's awesome, though. Congrats. I know you've been there a long Six time. Six years, yeah. And uh, I know you really like it. And yep. uh, hell, you like it so much, you almost tried to get me a job there. So, <laughs> well, you did amazing at that interview. I mean, if anybody could tank an interview b- yeah, more, I, better I, than I, you did, I, I would yeah. like to see it. Like, <laughs> like you know, telling them I, I don't really want to work. I, I don't really mm-hmm. want the job. That's right, always, right. Those are always good statements to utter at a job interview. Well, it's not that uh, I don't want to work. I just don't think I wanted that particular job. So, uh, ah, well, I'm I, glad. I'm kidding. I don't want to work either. But I'm glad you made me look like an asshole in front of my whole company. So, that's <laughs> oh, cool. I did not. We it was established. <laughs> before i even went over there with your hr person no they threatened to, they threatened to terminate me because of oh, it was. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i'm oh just kidding of course. um i do want to so, say doug mccauley I, I, he put something in here and I, I don't know if anyone else caught this so he says i almost bailed tonight to catch up on the physical 100 i feel i made the correct choice nice to see you all have you ever seen that show no what is that it's on Netflix and it's based out of Korea, I think. And basically they take a hundred of like the fittest people, mostly all from Korea, but they're every once in a while there's some from other countries or whatever. And they basically have to do this grueling these grueling um what do you call them? Like events or whatever. And after each event, people just get eliminated. Like I think one of the very first ones that everyone's literally like just hanging from the seat, like sitting sitting or hanging from these ceiling rafters. You know, and what they just the start. Hell? They just start dropping. There's this, a pool of water below, and like you know, after after so long, you can only stay up there or try to hang with your arms or your legs or whatever. And people just start dropping. So then they're all out, and then it goes on to the next one. Then they do a thing like two people like in an enclosed space, and there's like a big giant ball, and you have to grab it, almost like keep away. <laughs> you know, for like one minute, you got to hold on to it. it. It's a crazy show, dude. They just started a season two. So if you get a chance, check it out on Netflix. I will definitely do that. I'm in the middle of full swing right now. I mean, I'm you know in golf mode, so I'm watching that. But uh, I just finished I, I season love, two, <laughs> dude. I, it's it's fascinating, and dude, if it's like, I mean, those Korean shows, man, like Squid Game. I can't wait for the second season of Squid Game. Oh, that too. was amazing. So, yep. um, all right, so, um, tonight is going to be an interesting episode. I think I think Kale McLeish kind of nailed it. Good to see you, by the way, Kale. Um, he said, let's be fair. We all know how it goes. The first four and in the presence of enemies, part two, and then the others like, yes, yeah, you know, so um, and uh, last thing real quick before we get rolling here, got to send a shout out to Chastity Crawley and Johan Alexanderson. They were t- uh, they were uh, talking in the chat right before we went live and they they both have alarms set on their phones or something, uh, letting them know when we go live. <laughs> That's that's crazy, man. That is like ridiculously flattering. So thank you guys very much, man. The support is always appreciated. That's that's really freaking cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so this will be this will be good, dude. Uh, I'm kind of warming up my pipes for tomorrow night. I'm actually going to be on a Van Halen podcast doing Van Halen trivia. So oh, wow. yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how nerdy I am at Van Halen trivia. I've proven my metal with with Dream Theater trivia. Now it's time to see. How much I know against other Van Halen nerds with Van Halen trivia. So we'll plug the know. show. What uh, what what show is it? So I don't know if it's live or not, but it's uh, the, the show is called "And the Podcast Will Rock," and it's a Van Halen show. And and the 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 whole crux of it is they they each episode is dedicated to one like deep diving a single song of the Van Halen catalog, and they're down to seven songs. Like I just found this show like a month ago, Whoa. and. So I missed all of it mostly because they're like they only have like seven songs left. But um, yeah, I mean the hosts do a really good job. Um, they, it's it's you know they're engaging, they're interesting, and I'm not. It's weird, like you know I I do two podcasts, but I'm not like podcast guy. You know what I mean? Like I don't listen to a lot because I think a lot of the times like the hosts are just kind of like monotone and it doesn't you know they don't make the subject matter interesting. At least for me, so I'm not I'm not being judgy because you know I have a couple right. shows. It's just my own personal preference. Um, but these guys do a great job, man, and they have you know little trivia things throughout the night. And you know, I, I watched an episode where it, it's so funny. I was like, all right, you know, I was. It, it's it's weird that I surprised myself with my own nerdiness. But they had a game where it was like, whose autobiography did this come from, Sammy or Dave's? And they would read like a single sentence and go, okay, was that Sammy's book or Dave's book? 
And I was, I mean, if I would have been on that show, <laughs> not only did I get everyone right, but I was like several seconds ahead of anybody else answering. I mean, it was, I was like, God bless. What have I done? Like, God, I am such a nerd. <laughs> like, well, if, if Dave wrote anything like the way he would talk, you know, like in those oh, MTVs, like, please return your stewardesses to their upright position and all that nonsense, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> dude, I pretty easy for you to tell. <laughs> I have I have his autobiography. I'll, I will have to lend it to you. You, you got to read it. It's it's exactly okay. like that. It is weird as hell. I mean, it's entertaining, but God damn, is it strange? But um, all okay, right. He, any, he, OK, go ahead. No, sorry. I was I was gonna say, yeah. so, you know, we'll, we'll get, let's get on to the topic here. The topic right. at hand. Um, so, you know, we've done our deep dive into the record. I went back and listened to that again uh, yesterday, and I can confidently say that if you know the band ever listened to that in the middle of the show, um, <laughs> we might not ever be asked to interview them. So, uh, <laughs> uh, oh look, it's our buddy Rich Wilson. Rich, what's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, it's a solid album, but not one that I tend to listen to a lot. Some great songs, but others don't do it for me. Far stronger albums from the first Portnoy era. But, you know, that's the first time I've heard that term, the first Portnoy era. That's crazy, man. Well, you know. So, I mean, let, let's st let's start there with Rich's point, because this is something that you and I talked about. And I, I went back and listened to this record a couple times in the last few days. And I mean, this just really hit home for me that, you know, I, we, 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 we described it in our deep dive as a record of high highs and low lows. And as I was listening to it again, the last couple of days, I mean, it's really true. Like when, you know, when it really hits it, when, when it hits, it hits. And when it doesn't hit, it does not hit. So, I mean, do you still have that opinion of the record or has you know repeated listens kind of changed that for you or well a quick question before i go there so i'm trying to figure i do not i did not listen to our original deep dive and okay. i don't know if that's good or bad because <laughs> right. it's like okay i don't want to necessarily repeat myself but i also don't want to like i kind of want to come into this fresh too you know what i mean because you can still have a new perspective um, you know, doing these exercises we do like this with the different episodes. I think you can still have what I consider a pretty solid album, even if there's one or two that we're not massive fans of. I'll put it that way. What's difficult is there's only eight songs on this album. You know, <laughs> and if you've got have it your way, there's seven, right? Because... <laughs> But e either way, you, you see what I'm saying? I mean, there's only eight on here. So if you say, well, there's two or even three that you're not thrilled with, I mean, my God, there's <laughs> there's 40% of the album, you know? I know, yeah. If, if you say three. So I still think I still think it's a really solid album despite uh, the stuff that I'm not super big on because the highs are so high for me. I'll put it that way. Yeah, and I, you know, having gone back and listened to the deep dive, which oddly enough, I, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever done, but I did this time. Um, yeah, that's basically our, that was basically both of our opinion, you know, during that deep dive was that you know this is such a unique record for them, and I think it's the only one in the catalog you can kind of look at this way. Like people say, oh, systematic cast, that's a great record, but then when you get into it, I, you know, I think the fan base as a whole, there's, you know. I hate to be blunt, but you know, I, I think for a lot of fans, there's a couple clunkers on this one, like pretty big clunkers in their catalog. But the hits are so fucking good that it overshadows the lower parts of the record. So, you know, oh yeah, <laughs> uh oh, I mean, we're, gonna, right. we're gonna get that the entire night. You understand that, right? Well, I don't know. See, see look now. <laughs> wait a minute. Murillo Alves says, "I love Repentance, Ministry of Lost Souls," though. Oh man, see, see, oh man, see, Marilo, you're on Brian's side on this one. You know, it's <laughs> Sean Faust. Great to see you, brother. He says, John, does your list does your list start with top is repentance and second is ministry of lost souls? Oh, you are such a joker. <laughs> There's Doug Doug McCauley says repentance, the only track in history that features Steve Vai and Chris Jericho. Steve uh. Vai never did WrestleMania. <laughs> can you right. see him like like what if he like jumps over the ring with his guitar and he's like 
pulling it and he's like stabbing it at people while he's pulling or something <laughs> stupid i don't know oh my god the chris vi venom or something some stupid finisher name or something don't, don't get me started on chris jericho and why he should never be allowed to actually be on an album <laughs> again <laughs> ever, right. or in the first place all right so so Je- jeff uh hopefully i'm pronouncing your last uh, jeff pizoka pizocha let me know uh he says once we get to repentance however i do have some insight to share no, that's well, good. Jeff, you, you can keep that to yourself, Jeff, because yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> we don't need right. to hear it. <laughs> well, that's a perfect segue, Brian. He says, when we get to repentance. So I'm going to lead things off here with the biggest surprise of the night and say that uh, if I'm ranking the songs, we're obviously going worst to first. Um, no surprise here. Repentance is my least favorite song on this record. Unfortunately, it is my least favorite Dream Theater song. Uh, you know, my, my feelings on this one are, are very well documented um yeah see kale nailed it well you may as well start (laughs) number eight shall we say it all together now (laughs) oh my gosh oh my god look look at sean faust with the champions pose so i was right repentance was for yeah sean everybody knows that sean nostradamus faust oh strikes again look at this marilo alves paralyzed has to be the worst dream theater song ever come on dude Marilo, I could probably name. I'm going out on a limb here. This might be an episode. I might be able to name a hundred songs that I like a little bit less than Paralyzed. But, I I love Paralyzed. Uh, let's. Uh, we have to put something in context for everyone, especially anyone who's new. The thing about you, John, is you worship and love this band, and whatever your second least favorite song is, is not even in the stratosphere as Repentance. <laughs> Yes, that's, and, I, and that's I'm not true. just saying that, right? I'm, I mean, I'm being brutally no, honest yeah. here. Whereas I have a couple where I'm just kind of like, eh. But you literally like, okay, repentance is just way down here, and then whatever your next thing is, like, I still like the song a lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> they're, no, they're, you're right. You, you're right. you just don't have so. So this is you have some serious <laughs> dislike for the song. Yeah, I do. Well, okay. So I listened to it several times over the last few days i'm like okay let me dig into this because i never do listen to it and i i will say i love the concept of it i i i love the concept of the 12 step suite i think that's a great idea um you know i i think unfortunately portnoy kind of painted himself into a corner with it because you know he starts out with the glass prison which is kind of like a metaphor you know the glass prison you know whatever and you know, as as it goes on, it was kind of more storytelling. But then, you know, the back half of it is really kind of just much more literal, literal out of the, you know, you know, the, the book of Bill W or whatever the alcoholic book is. Um, so I, th- I think by starting it out, like, you know, not being as literal, he kind of painted himself into a corner, unfortunately. So but I love the concept of it. I just it, with repentance, as I was listening back to it, it just. It feels unfinished to me. And, you know, it's almost like right where you think they're going to do a couple extra notes like they normally would. They don't. They hit the same note a couple times. And, you know, it's it's not what you would expect and not in like the best ways possible. So, um, you know, I the concept's great. I just think the delivery, there's something missing there. And for me, again, I it's it unfortunately stands out to me. So obviously, when I think of is there a dream theater song? That if I had every single Dream Theater track on my Amazon Music and I put everything on random, is there is there anything I would skip? And unfortunately, Repentance is that song. So, you know, <laughs> Aiken. Octavarium is their worst song, with its only use being to piss off bar patrons and country bars via touch tunes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You are wildly wrong. Octavarium is amazing. Just just go home, Chris. You're drunk. Uh <laughs> <laughs> jg3 hey look it's the two guys who talk about the best band ever and it sounds like they're talking about one of the best band ever's worst songs <laughs> oh my god again if, if anybody ever tunes into this especially portnoy we are we are just absolutely like he's probably gonna copyright infringe us like be like you guys can't even do the show anymore oh my god i it's, it's just not for me it's not for me so um all right, so so that's my number eight. What what is your number eight? I think I know what it is, but I'll be interested to see if I'm wrong. You could unmute yourself too. 
We've only been doing this for three years and three months, you dick. Yeah, that that looks awesome. It's not. I just kept going for the hell of it. Just I know you did. (laughs) As we say on the Nerf Herder Council, that's great content for our audio viewers. (laughs) So last night I was on top of your. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! All right. Um, Yeah, this is no. I wanted to join your uh, repentance uh, club, but you know, I've I've got ministry of lost souls. Now, is Ministry your official least favorite Dream Theater song? Yeah, and here's the thing. Ministry of Lost Souls, maybe seven, eight minutes they did of it. Probably okay, but, man, at 14 minutes and 57 seconds, I just can't overlook, you know, it's just too, it's just not my cup of tea. You know, they can't do this for 15 minutes. The plotting string part before the instrumental it feels forced to me that chugging thing i I don't know it feels really kind of kind of stale and stock they they sort of go back and forth with the chugging part the keyboard solo another keyboard solo and then the guitar riff that you know that kind of whiny thing it just no it's never really done anything for me me. um there, there there is one really killer part of this and that's like the 30 it's 30 seconds of the melody harmony with the keyboard guitars to yeah, the walking part. Yeah, yeah, that walking that that sends up and it capitulates into that trill at the end, and the guitar holds on, but it's but it rings out, and then they go into that bendy riff on guitar, which I, I don't know. It, I mean, Dream Theater has plenty of these droney kind of guitar lines and stuff, but this one just feels heavy handed. Honestly, for for lack of a better word, the song is it's just depressing. And I don't mind songs that are kind of sad and take you to dark and sad places or whatever. Or, but I don't know. This one just fifteen minutes, you know, being hit over the head with it like that. I, I just and and then when they, of course we get to go see the show of all shows and what shows up in the <laughs> what shows up in the set list, right? Almost like oh, we're gonna get this guy, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you hendrickson <laughs> yeah so i mean that that's that's what it is for me i mean you know again if this song was seven minutes you know even eight to ten i'm probably like you know what i it bothers me but it's not to you know it still probably might be my least favorite but it wouldn't be so much of like i'm just i'm just probably gonna skip it you know yeah <laughs> until i get to that end of that solo part with the right. harmonies going on but <laughs> Well, and I think I think you know what does it for me, like, and you know, we'll you know transition here. My number seven is Ministry of Lost Souls. Um, for me, it's the the tempo is so slow, but they ride that tempo like it's like it's kind of one of those things like when you listen to a song, and it feels like it's going somewhere, and you're you're you got that little bit of tension going, yeah, mm, you're let's go, yeah, get there, get there, you know. Like you're waiting for it to, to 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 pick up to where you're expecting it to go. And this one doesn't. I mean, it's got that middle part, which is cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then it just it goes, you know, right back into the slow part. And it's just dun, 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 dun. like it's it's just too slow for me. And I know that sounds weird, but it's that's literally what it is. It's just too slow. Well, and and even the instrumental parts, uh, I think just kind of feel sort of thrown in there before they get to that part at the end that I really like. I don't know. It just kind of seems like, all right, here's comes our solo, you know, a bunch of solos back and forth that I just don't think are that. I don't know. To me, it's not. And someone else said, oh, they think there's great uh, melody in this. I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what melody they're hearing, but there's not. You know. <laughs> I mean, maybe kind of the, some of the some of the mellow parts that James sings at the end are are, are decent, but I just I don't know, man. It, it's it's just one ism for me. I, I mean, this is definitely if you're trying to get someone into Dream Theater who's heard that the songs are too long and too droney and too this and too that, do not yes. give them the song because they'll never come. You'll never get them to listen to a Dream Theater song ever again. Yes, it, dude. It's funny you mentioned that because like I was talking to my wife about you know the show before you know i came down here we went live and i mentioned that we were going to talk about these couple songs and i said unfortunately you know i i think that you know some of the complaints that non-fans have a couple songs on this record kind of play into um you know and and like i like you said like 
outside of repentance any other song i'm like yeah i could easily listen to that like still you know i still like the song you know there are parts you know in this song that i like i, I do like the middle part um you know that's cool but again it's it's because it picks up it's it's not that super slow droning thing um yeah i you know i'm with you man this is you know this is for me it's just not you know um well, jg3 and, real quick before we get to and even sure. if i didn't have like i don't want to say this utter hatred for the song even if i just thought it was okay based on the rest of the album i'm probably gonna put this last anyway i'll just be honest you know what i mean yeah oh, i mean it makes sense uh jg3 says that's a great point john maybe a faster tempo would have really done the song some good that's what i mean by i think it could have been a better song if they shelved it and worked on it some more you know jay that is an excellent point and you know brian we'll get to your number seven in a minute but that's actually something that i thought of jay the three songs on here that i really am kind of you know on the fence about you know the ones that i ranked at the bottom they sound a little bit unfinished to me that when i was listening to the record a couple times i was like god damn it sounds like the ones that i'm into and not saying you know my opinion is is god or anything it's obviously not what i'm what i'm going at here but like you know the songs that everybody is into on this record they sound fleshed out it's like it's a dream theater song it's 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 what you come to expect but the ones that you know fans tend to kind of turn away from those are the ones they almost sound a little bit unfinished like there was there was a little bit more stuff they could have done to make put a little bit more ear candy in there at least. So I think I think that's a very good point, Jay. That's that's a that's a very good point. So um I like the right. dude Doug McCauley's point there. <laughs> try this. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So Doug says, try this. Every time my wife says, Ooh, I love that song, who is it? I say, Dream Theater. When it's actually Dream Theater, she says, This sucks. What else is on? <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh my that's God. one of the best lines i've ever seen in my life that's great that is an amazing wife troll right there that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> nice look at that look at, doug. look at doug also said paid for my dream theater ticket they played repentance and ministry of lost souls and didn't refund my ticket <laughs> <laughs> nice oh my god that's hilarious all right so my number seven is ministry of lost souls what is your number seven if it's not what i think it is i'm going to be shocked <laughs> Yeah, I put repentance number seven. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll kind of say the same thing I did about this and, and be more believable, I think. You know, I don't mind the music and the verses, and I think James' vocals are fine. Um, if you cut this one after the guitar solo, which I think is really, really cool. I love them a lot of choices. It's like six and a half minutes. Just, just cut it. Fade it out. If you cut yeah. that right there... And we don't get into the just the heavy-handed, and I understand what the song is going for. I, I completely understand the concept. You know, you you bring up the everyone's, you know, bringing up their their sins or so-called or regrets or whatever. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, you know, you cut all that out, or maybe, you know, you just do a couple quick ones of those. You know, but we still have another. You know, after that part, I'm talking about where we should cut it. We got five minutes left. So and then we're gonna we're gonna hear all that stuff and it just feels just feels super heavy handed and and I don't know. I, I I guess when you are doing something as ambitious as that twelve steps you know, sweet, it, it it is gonna come into sounding heavy handed at some point and, and I don't wanna say corny, but um you know what I'm going for here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> look at aiken he's such a dick what john is brian is brian saying more discipline in writing would make it better on a song aiken you dick they've got 15 studio records you still don't know your ass from a hole in the ground <laughs> look, look at this all right look marillo alves it, this is this has got to be sarcasm ass holio or somebody marillo alves says repentance is better than constant motion much better Oh, look, I oh my God! I spoke him into existence. The next comment is the man, the myth, the legend, Sarcasmo Asolio. He must Repentance, be both people at once. Song ever. It's got to be. It's got to be. Oh, they're both on YouTube. Maybe he's on multiple screens. That's Sarcasmo. How have you been, dude? <laughs> I was thinking today when I was listening back to the uh, the deep dive, I was like, God, we haven't we haven't seen Sarcasmo in a bit. So, um, 
Yeah, Brian, um, to your point, I completely agree. Uh, you know, it, it can get heavy handed. The one thing I will say, I don't mind the, the part in the middle with people like confessing. I actually think that's a really cool idea. I think it's extremely personal. I like I like the concept of it. You know, I'm going to go back to what I said on the deep dive, though. Corey Taylor, like him using that as like a performance piece. I'm here to confess that I shut up. Fuck off, man. Like, just speak like a human being. You're you're not here to be the cool Corey Taylor guy. Everybody you know wants to see in Slipknot and Stone Sour. It's dude, you fucked something up. Admit it. Don't sit there. I'm so sorry. You know, and he ends it. The truth is truth. All you can do is live. With it. Well, the truth is you you pissed all over a good concept. So, ugh, man, dude, I I just I hate Corey Taylor's performance on that because it's not supposed to be a performance. It's like, hey, man, like you know, like I I don't know who it is. I I can't keep all the names straight, but the, the guy who's like, yeah, you know, I was you know supposed to, you know, my best friend asked me to sing something at his wedding. And I was too chicken shit to do it. Like, it's a guy just being like, yeah, I fucked up. Instead, Corey Taylor's got to be like, yeah, I'm Corey Taylor. And I'm on a record. <laughs> like, shut up, dude. Like, enough. So. Well, I, I yeah. appreciate Chris Aiken. It says, <laughs> I like other ball lickers. Okay. Hey, man, you do you, buddy. This is really not what the podcast is about. Look at but <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said, may not know, but no, I had the balls to say it to Petrucci. I like other ball lickers. There you go. Yeah, I was on that interview, and and Aiken, you got to find the audio of that so that we can actually play it on the show, because you did. You you told John Petrucci that you think that their songwriting is undisciplined, and I told him that I thought you were wrong because I thought it took extreme discipline to keep people's interest for fifteen minutes, and he answered the question. So well, was, the, and the great. courage and the courage to tell someone in Dream Theater that you like other ball lickers, I think is that's, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, that's, there's that's the huge, thing. man. There's the thing. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, okay. Well, let's get to number six. So my number six, I think, is going to be no surprise. Of course, I have Prophets of War. And now we get into stuff that I actually enjoy on the record. Um, Tom DeVoe, what is up, man? Holy shit. So just for you guys, so you guys know who I'm talking about. So Tom is the owner of a local bar here in Wadsworth. I live like three minutes up the road from and it is like a dive bar, like it's called Retro, and it's nothing but neon and nerd shit from like the 80s. It is the most glorious place you will ever have a drink at. And uh, Tom is the owner, and he's amazing. He and I bullshit guitar and music like crazy. So um, he says, in the presence is by far the best, but constant motion is probably a close second. Dream Theater is an all-star band of top-tier musicians, so every song is more like some elaborate production than it is just a title. Yeah. Um, they, now, Tom, you got to split in the presence of enemies into two parts, but you know, you know, look, oh, God damn it. <laughs> and now I get a hair joke. Matt Wardlaw. Matt, Matt Wardlaw. I'll have to try that comb over that John's rocking tonight. Uh, Matt, why would you set yourself up like that? You're bald as shit. <laughs> you couldn't comb over three strands, my friend. Like, hey, if know. anyone wants to rock that, just go into your local barber and say, yeah, give me the sex offender, please. <laughs> please a couple of guys that can't grow hair making fun of me hey i got plenty of hair man <laughs> oh yeah sure okay yeah, i do but okay. the problem is the color of it it's not that i don't have enough <laughs> right. all right so back on topic man this is <laughs> this is a great episode so far tonight man i love the chat um yeah i mean i think you know prophets of war is a cool song um you know again this is kind of one of those songs to me it's just kind of there you know, if it comes up, I'm like, sweet, I'll listen to it. Um, I don't seek it out. But it's a cool song. Um, I think it's got some really cool drum stuff. It's got an interesting groove to it. And I like, you know, there's a shitload of the, you know, the queen vocal type of thing going on, which is really cool. And they keep layering it and all that kind of thing, which, which is interesting. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's some really cool parts to this song. Uh you know, I, every, every time I think of this song, I think about how I almost went to New York City to be a part of the recording of it and everything, but I couldn't because I had, you know, get ready to take a, dr take a drink, people. I had been, you know, at score earlier, you know, that year or, you know, what, you know, a few months before. So I couldn't take the time off of work again. But, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now we got <laughs> a- a- Aiken, Aiken and Wardlaw going back and forth in the chat. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, I. <laughs> so anyway, so, yeah, that's that's what I think of when I think of Prophets of War. And um, but I mean, it's a cool song. But you know, if I if outside of the previous two, um, <laughs> this is <laughs> Matt couldn't do a comb over if he bought a wig. <laughs> I want to know who Johan Alexanderson's talking about. Johan Alexanderson, I think he kind of looks like a Polish strip club bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> who is he talking about? Oh my God, that's wait, fantastic. A, wait, wait a minute. Breaking news: Chastity Crowley has some news about her car. She's getting custom vinyl window cutouts with the Majesty Circle and vanity plates. Do you see that one? Let's see. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> custom vinyl window cutouts with the Majesty Circle. Nice. I have no idea where this came from. I just saw it over there. I don't know what in the world they're talking about. Oh, my God. But neither do we, so I guess it all works out. All right. So let's let's keep this on the rails. God, this is like an episode of the Nerf Herder Council tonight. I know. Um, but yeah, so that's where I stand on Prophets of War. Um, cool song. Again, it, you know, for me, it's just kind of there. Um, but but there's some really great parts to it, and the vocals make it interesting. There's some really great Portnoy stuff in there, I think, because he does some very interesting, you know, kind of kind of rhythmic stuff for me. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a cool song. But yeah, outside of the two that we've already mentioned, I think with the six remaining songs, for me, this is definitely if I had to pick one of the six, this would be the last one I would choose to listen to. But I still like it, so. Um, what do, what do you have at number six? This was the easiest song to place out of all of them, and you okay. nailed it. You nailed it. It's Prophets of War. It was the absolute easiest one. You knew it had to go six. I don't know where where else it could go, unless right. you're, unless unless you actually like Ministry of Lost Souls, which is fine. Then maybe Prophets go seven or something. But yeah, I mean, it, six is perfect. I like the piano, the, you know, the beginning piano with that really cool synth that they got going. There's a little bit of the, um, oh, of course I'm. Gonna draw. There's a little bit of the muse feel to this once again. Yes, yeah. You know, like they have have on a couple of the songs, but uh, yeah, that Queen thing is cool, and you know the the um, when they had the fans singing the backgrounds and stuff. That thing we've talked before yeah. about this. This is a this is an extremely unique sounding Dream Theater song. There's nothing else in the catalog that sounds like this. Um, and I cool. think there's a I think there's a couple instances of that on this record so i will i will give it that even the low stuff brian i i think it's incredibly unique in that they yeah. you know they it, there's nothing else that sounds like it and i'm not saying oh because it's not a good song it's just you know it's an incredibly unique sound for them so i agree with that okay you can continue um yeah i mean <laughs> what are you doing oh i was scrolling to see what our comments were no i i mean you know I think I said all I need to say on that. You covered it pretty well. <laughs> Let me read the comments, you dumbass. That's what all the right. host is for. <laughs> all right, read the comments. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't want to miss any more about your hair. I know you're going to keep those on the Dude. side. Dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's You know what's funny? Like, no one is really complimenting it outside of two people, and I'm like, okay, cool, then I'm keeping it. Because I, I like it. I don't give a shit. I'm, so I'm tired of, you know. Stevie Wonder, and then who was the other person? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my god oh my god anyway all right let's 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 get to the songs that i'm sure everybody wants to talk about unfortunately kale does not have a good song in his top five kale's very wrong he says number six is forsaken not even sorry i just don't dig it but accept it as being better than profits and at least 12 parsecs better than repentance that means that kale in his top five has uh, the Ministry of Lost Souls. Kale, your credibility is going to go further and further down if, if it gets above five. So to, let's just let's just be clear on that. So, all right. So my number five, and I, I will I will I will preface these five by saying, I love all these songs. I think they're great. I think these are the songs that make this record. Maybe not this one because I think this one is a little bit, you know, hit or miss for a lot of fans. For me, it's not. I love this song. But I think when people think of this record and why it's so strong, I think it's these five songs for sure. So, um, <laughs> Aiken, it's a great haircut if you're a first-year barber college student. 
<laughs> nice grammar, you dick. It's Y O apostrophe Y O U apostrophe R E, asshole. <laughs> That's what you're focusing on. Oh, Maybe you should boy. pay more attention to your hair than your grammar. My hair is fine. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number five is Forsaken, and you know of the top five, the ones that I love on this record, um. The, unfortunately there had to be one that's in fifth place and this is this is that and but i think this is a great song i i honestly don't understand why it gets crapped on so much like i get you know people say it's the evanescence song or whatever <laughs> jg3 for sucking <laughs> oh my god that's awesome <laughs> dude i i like this song i i actually like this song like i i don't i don't understand why people hate it I think it's got a great melody and stuff. It's got an unbelievable guitar solo. Um, you know, I mean, the lyrics are about a vampire, but I, I don't think it ventures into being cheesy. You know, I, you know, I dig it. I, I think it's a cool song. I, I, just, I enjoy it. I, I, I don't know. I like the groove to it and everything. I think it's got some cool rhythmic stuff, you know, especially in the second verse, like, duh, 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 like with the harmonics and stuff like that. So I like it. I, I think there's a lot here and I, you know, I'm going to beat this dead horse. I don't understand why a lot of fans crap on the song. So for me, Forsaken's number five and I don't understand why people don't like it. So that's exactly where I knew you. I've guessed your list to a T so far. <laughs> I, I was I was thinking you probably would. Yeah, not that it's that difficult with those with those songs. Um, I'll give I'll do Forsaken after I get to my number five, which I'll probably get absolutely annihilated for. Okay. Uh, I have Presence of Enemies Part Two. Okay. And, and I'll I'll tell you what hurts this, and I believe I brought this up on our deep dive. If I didn't, I'll make the point now. What hurts this song is Ministry of Lost Souls being 15 minutes before it. So, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not I'm not even kidding about that. Like you're kind of beaten down, you're kind of worn out, and then we're gonna close with another 17 minute song after we just had this thing that to me doesn't do a lot for me. You know, kind of kind of puts me in a trance and snooze fest. You know, and then now it's like, oh crap! Now I gotta focus on this, and and I think it hurts. I think it hurts this song a lot, and I, I, I don't know if they had just mixed the, the track listing around a little bit different and had something else before it, maybe put Prophets of War there, switch them around. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's an epic song. The, I, I, the very end of it, um, those, I call them the farty synth bins, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a technical music word, right? <laughs> farty synth bins. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love those, and they and it's just the last three minutes, man. Just the massive orchestration that I like on this song with the strings and everything, and I like the melodies that they're playing, and I like how it, I like how this album ends with just those last three, four minutes. I love the the huge symphonic, just giantness of this part. You know, very cool. But I think this song definitely suffers from having Ministry of Lost Souls go right before it. If you're trying to do a full beginning to end album listen okay i can see where you're coming from on that but i would kind of i would kind of envision that it's almost at least for me using that as the context it'd be actually the opposite you know like because after getting through you know the three songs that we had at, you know eight seven and six it's kind of like okay well you know, did the album fall off? And I, I, I think, you know, in the presence of enemies, part two kind of saves it, you know, because I, it's, it's not that I'm burnt out. I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting for it to get back on track. And I think, you know, this song gets it back on track. So um, maybe, but I'll also say I for sure, even if you throw out my argument about <clears throat> the song before it, I for sure like my top four over that one a lot. By, by a decent margin, right. I'll say. You know, I mean, something has to go five, right? Well, I mean, look, let, let's let, let's get to my number four since we're talking about it. My number four is in the presence of enemies, part two. Wow! Um, and I now now I will say this: this one and my number three, it it's a coin flip, and it it depends on the day. And today, when I was finalizing my list, which wasn't very difficult, um, these were the two that I had to finalize, and man it could go either way 
because to me they're equal and it just depends what sort of stuff I kind of want to hear. So, and again, you know, like I just said, for me in the presence of enemies part two, I, it's almost like, okay, follow me here. Cause I'm not saying like, Oh, the record was bad and this saves it, but I'm saying it saves the record in that, you know, the first, you know, four songs people are into, and then you get three that people are like, you know, who, I don't know if I like that. And then this one comes along and people like it. So like, Oh yeah. So it's like, you know, the, the last taste in your mouth that you get is something else you like. So I, I think, you know, for you, you say it's a sequencing issue. I, I would argue against that because I think this comes up at a perfect time because you get something dark and weird and progressive and especially, you know, just the song title itself. You know, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I bought the record, and I saw in the presence of enemies part one and in the presence of enemies part two, I was like, okay, is this going to be like, you know, two different songs where it's just part one, part two, like Metropolis, whatever, you know, or is it a half and half? Like, and we had heard, you know, that it was a song split. So in my mind, I'm going, okay, well, all right, what, what is this? So when I put the record on to listen to, and I heard, you know, the album open with In the Presence of Enemies Part 1, and I fucking loved it. Well, the whole rest of the record, I'm going, ooh, what's Part 2 sound like? So when it got to the part of the album that I really wasn't into, I still had that, you know, Part 2 hanging out there going, oh, am I going to love this? Like, what, what's coming yet? So, and when I got to it, I, it was it was great. So, you know, I, I, I love this song for that for that reason. And when you do listen to it, as you know one cohesive song um you know like on the chaos in motion uh release it sounds kick-ass man it, it fits together amazingly well kale's made this point many times about this one that you know he's into it because he loves at the end when it goes back into the themes from the first part of the song and i completely agree with him so i you know i i think that's a great part of the song like and you know again <clears throat> Your sequencing thing, I don't know how else they could have done it. I don't think you can put this anywhere else. I mean, what are you going to close the record with? I mean, there's not really a better way to do it. And and it's almost, it's really cool. Like, I mean, having the big song be the, be the bookends. So, you know, like you said, maybe, 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 you know, flopping profits of war and ministry of lost souls or something, but. Sorry, you know, I'm not trying to block this. I just, I, I just can't look at your hair when I do my comments. So real quick. (laughs) i love it man i'm telling you a person it doesn't look as goofy it does look goofy online but uh no well well first of all dude and i'm I'm not even kidding here i'm shocked because i thought you were always the big proponent opponent of you told me i thought many a time that you thought part two was like way better than part one no no, no, i'm kind of shocked i swore you said that i have not uh, okay, you, well. apparently you need to do research in our into our previous episodes <laughs> um, r- real quick here so chris aiken asks a serious question which is very rare for him he, he even says it a rare serious question does the album cover have meaning or relation to these songs um i i have okay so the chat can bail me out on this one i have not read that chris uh usually it's got something to do i i if I were to guess, I think, you know, the ants were a big thing and the, the huge amount of like construction going on. It's like, you know, I, I think constant motion and, and yeah. chaos and, and, you know, chaos and motion and stuff like that. It's like things moving forward were kind of, you know, the, you know, the themes, you know, they were going for on the album cover. Cause it was kind of, you know, that way with, with the record too, because it was, you know, we did our 20th anniversary. Now we're moving forward into this new thing. You know, there's, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um well i was thinking the ants could be like the presence of enemies you know it's like a some type of symbolism or something i, I don't know i, I don't think know. that's I an absolutely would be. i i think that's an absolutely terrible take but um okay i I, th- I think you're wildly wrong but you know there take it take it yeah <laughs> fuck you yeah make fun of my hair then i'm gonna get you on one. <laughs> oh my god all right so Sorry, I didn't mean to be an ass. So I was thinking the ants, like in the presence of enemies. <laughs> All right, what are we on? I'm on my number four. Yes, you are on number four. I have Forsaken. Okay. Mm. So basically our four and five are, are swapped. Yeah, we've been pretty close on all these, honestly. 
Uh, dude, I'll be honest. I I wondered outside of a ministry of lost souls and repentance. I wondered if we might not have been like dead on each other's list in a way. So uh, I think we'll be off on the well. Let's, well, there's only four left, so we're only going to be like one or two off anyway. Yeah, well, three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you have Forsaken at number yeah. four. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's a fun song. It's a super catchy chorus. I love the the interplay, but the you know the piano and the guitars interchanging throughout. Um, I, I don't know. So if the past tense of the word taken is tooken, would the past tense of this be forsaken? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, just, I, I don't oh know. I just, I, I'm not an English major, but uh, clearly, yeah. I, I don't. I guess I didn't realize there is there as much hate for this song as we think there is, or is it just something that people like to throw out in chat rooms? I don't think. <sighs> I mean, if you look at our chat, I mean, there's a lot of people that really don't like this song. And and as I've talked to other fans online and stuff like that, there's, you know, it, it's a song like I, I think that there are two schools of thought and mine is one of them. It's, you know, there are people that, oh, this song sucks. And there's people like me, like, I don't get it. Why, why does this song suck? Like, you know, like. Well, I, one, once again, like Prophets of War, it's. There's nothing really in the catalog that sounds like it, so yeah, hundred percent, yeah. Maybe they're just—I don't know. It just maybe it was just that whole evanescence thing, and people heard that riff and they're like, "Wait a second, I, I don't know." It's—I don't know, but it's a good song, though. I mean, it's catchy. You know, it's you know, well, it's, it's the per- it's, like holding out that note is cool in the chorus. Well, like, it's a perfect know. link too. It's like what, barely five minutes. I don't even think it's yeah, I mean minutes, it's it's it? like it's like the single for the record. So, yeah, basically. so it doesn't go on too long, but it's not like so obviously commercial that it's like, you know, three minutes. Not that they could even write a three minute song, although I guess they have like two of them. But yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, Alex Neal, by the way, good to see you, bud. Um, thanks for tuning in again. Good to see you. Uh, he says it's probably a guilty pleasure for a lot of people. Yeah, I man, I just. Yeah, well, oh, Johan Johan Alexanderson, man, he might he might have it. He might have it. He says Prague fans like to show they like Prague and they like Prague only. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that could be. I'm trying to think of another I mean, song. For, for God's sakes, it's not One Direction or something. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I I don't know. I I guess I don't. Dude, Whatever. it's it, 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 like, it, but it's it's catchy. It's got, you know, some simplistic great playing, but there's enough prog stuff. And like I say, like, you know, there's that cool rhythmic shit in the second verse that like completely separates it from the other parts of the song, which is really cool. So, uh, you know, I mean. Oh, we pissed off JG3. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, man. You guys in the chat are the best. <laughs> hey, I was talking I earlier I was talking about north, south. I wasn't just talking about one specific direction. <laughs> Look at this. Man, Marillo Alves, man, he goes, Prog fans are not even here now. Look at Marillo. He's Marillo's getting he's getting pissed off because he's we jumped on him a few times. How do you know it's a he? <laughs> I don't dude, I'm guessing. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I seriously don't know. This is the first time this person's ever been on here, isn't it? It's probably someone troll knowing us. It's one of our fans trolling us with a second account, which would which would be which would be hilarious. Chastity Crawley giving him the wooden spoon. Chastity Crawley. Chastity Crawley is the, is the is the chat mom. <laughs> well, she started her own bakery too. Yeah, and by the way, Brian, uh, Marillo says I was here the other day. So there you go. Oh, okay. he said asked you all to call me Bob. <laughs> oh my God, that's right. Yeah. Sorry, Marillo. I'm sorry. Like, sorry about that, we, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we for, we forget shit on this show quite frequently. So all right. So it's Bob Alves. There we go. So, <laughs> Christina Ricci. <laughs> Chris Aiken. Stick to the topic, Christina Ricci here. All right. So all right. So we're in the top three. So my top three. I don't think there's any I don't think mine are gonna be a surprise. But number three, well, I have constant motion. Well, especially because there's only th- three songs left. It's only eight no, songs. I, okay. I mean, like, the fact that these would be the three that I chose. Man, I'm perfect so far on your on your list. Yeah. So, Constant Motion for me, and In the Presence of Enemies Part 2, is an absolute, absolute coin flip. Um, I, 
I listened to these back to back several times today, and I just could not decide. And I think I chose constant motion over in the presence of enemies part two for, you know, number three on my list because it's a little bit different for this record. Like this is the one slice of just furious aggression on the album. And it's that one spot, like if you're like, like a sound wave, like it kind of like goes up, there's ups and downs. And this one's like way up and you know, it's, it's just crazy all the way through. You know, we, we've, we've talked about it on the show a couple times that this, you know, this song is very aptly titled, you know, co- constant motion. It is in constant motion. It's, you know, there's tons of cymbal work going on, like quick guitar work. Um, and then it's all balanced out by this really just Neanderthal, at least for dream theater, kind of, you know, chorus of it's just ascending strummed power chords, which is something you never really think think you would hear from dream theater but they did and you know it's it's just a great song man it moves it keeps going it's concise it's to the point i mean this is just a kick-ass fucking song man and so if i had to choose between constant motion and in the presence of enemies part two um yeah i i think this one is going to you know at least today like i said there, it's a coin flip for me but i today constant motion is going to get the nod over in the presence of enemies part two i love chris Aiken. john here's a list of my two favorite bands i don't think you will be surprised <laughs> i don't know i'm just dying laughing today this is man, I, this is man I, I'm, I'm gonna retitle this episode john takes a beating parentheses <laughs> we rank the songs of, of systematic cast well um, he, he definitely deserved or, or whoever did that haircut deserves a beating let's put it that way <laughs> I, man i fucking hate you guys um <laughs> Tom Cullen says, I know I've missed a lot, but has anyone put repentance as number one yet? <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at, my look at, God. Damn it. Look, and and now the owner of Retro's giving me shit. Tom's giving me shit. By the way, the hair, that's quite a fashion statement. Quit sleeping with that baseball hat on, dude. You know what, dude? I'm a regular at your bar. The customer's always right. You need to shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Whew. Man, oh, man. So when the other people Jeez. that have their box under the bridge that you sleep next to saw that, did they go out and get the same cut? I'm just curious. <laughs> you know, this is just this is egging me on to make it worse, right? So I'm, I'm writing all this stuff down for my comedy act. Oh my god! Uh, all this right, is... so I have. I'll comment on your last one when I get to it. Okay. Uh, my number three is. Well, I think I guess I know where yours where your, this one says for you. I actually have Dark Eternal Night. Really. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh I I mean it's one of the most relentlessly heavy chugging riffs in their catalog. I love the beginning of the cor- of the chorus where they're drifting beyond all time. I love that yeah. whole little thing there. Um I'm going out on a limb. I think I said this on another episode. The return of Mike Portnoy when they play live, it'll be something from the new album and it's going to go right into Dark Eternal Night. That's in the first two or three songs. It's because he gets to do his metal angry, you know, his metal angry metal portnoy, you know, voice, yep. you know, and make his Last face and do, in the store. Yeah, and make that face and do all that crap. He's gonna be like jumping out of his drum throne to be doing that crap. So I, I right. bet that comes out quick. But yeah, I mean, I love, I love uh, Dark Eternal Night. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> man, oh man. This is see, this is gonna be the episode that's gonna <laughs> All right, Chris Chris wins with that one. <laughs> Aiken says nothing wrong with getting a haircut with a box cutter in a dark room. <laughs> I used to think that too until I saw what just happened to John. Oh my god. <laughs> Look, man, so th- this is gonna be the show that the audio, like the people that only download the audio version, that they're like, Yeah, I should listen live. This is gonna send them to YouTube and we're gonna have a jump in subscribers just so people, how bad is this haircut? Um <laughs> God, I, I so envy the people that only have to listen oh, to this. God, so. my God. <laughs> Look at Doug McCauley. John, it's okay to back out of the hair grow. Wouldn't blame you. <laughs> and see, I tried to bring up a great comment by by, by Jeff Pizoka. He says, Dark Nintendo Night. That's something for those of you guys who have not looked it up. Go on YouTube and look up the Dark Nintendo Night. It is like one of the greatest fucking things you will ever, ever see. Brian, have you seen the Dark Nintendo Night? I have. I think we talked about this 
Well, not that long after we started doing the podcast, and I'd never seen it, and you, you pointed me to it. I thought it was it's hilarious. Dude, it's like, for those who don't know, it's basically a combination of Super Mario Brothers and the Dark Eternal Night. It's like the greatest thing you'll ever see. So, um, yeah, I, you know, obviously I've got it in, in my top two. Um, so I'll wait to get to that song. But I love it. I, I think it's awesome. And, dude, two two things, and I'll get to my number two. But I think you bring up a great point. I think that is definitely a possibility of them within the first two or three songs going into the dark eternal night i think the fans would absolutely lose their shit i could see it easily a song too like open with the you know the the opening track on the new record which is kind of something that they kind of you know have a habit of doing and then everything goes black and all of a sudden you hear da 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 you know or you know do two songs from the new record or something and then do that um either or i really think that you know I really, I really think that that's a possibility. And number two, I think that might be kind of an interesting, you know, interesting episode. We, we should start making predictions of what the set list is going to be, and see how how close we are once once the whole tour comes down and everything. We should we should make predictions and then and then come back to our predictions and see how right we were. So, um, all right, so we are into the top two now. So my number two kind of surprised me a little bit. Because I, I thought that I, I would have had this at number one, but on repeated listens of the album, I did not. But at number two, I have In the Presence of Enemies Part One. It is just a kick ass fucking song. Uh, it's, you know, coming off of Octavarium, which is an album I liked a lot, I think this was kind of one of those songs that when fans heard it, they were like, okay, we're, you know, we're back. You know, Octavarium was good and everything, but, the, the, you know, we, we've said on the show before that with Octavarium, there weren't a lot of heavy moments. There weren't a lot of dark moments. There weren't a lot of those really kind of, you know, super dream theater E moments. It was it was a very kind of it was very progressive, but more in the vein of, you know. The bands they looked up to and modeled themselves after the mellower records, so. You know, when you get to systematic chaos and you'd been through, you know, Octavarium and the, and the 20th anniversary tour, when this song comes on, I think, you know, we all were like, Shh, OK, yeah, like we love Octavarium, but this is kind of what I think of when I think of Dream Theater. So, you know, it's it's just a great goddamn song, dude. Like the the, the melodies are excellent. You know, it, it's just like it. You know, like we we said about earlier songs, low in the list, like where it sounded kind of unfinished. This one sounds so well put together that it it's just, you know, it, it it's every, every note fits, every every rhythmic choice fits. You know, the lyrics are cool, like the, the whole thing just works. So I I really really like this one, man. So it's for me, it is number two on the record. What do you have as number two? Well, I like In the Presence of Enemies uh, Part 1 so much that my number two is Constant Motion. <laughs> nice. So, Wow. Okay, so now, all right, so Constant Motion at number two. Yeah. We have gotten some crap for that song in the chat. So Yeah, I, I love the musicality of, of, of the riff, man. Um, this is one of those, so we've talked about this before, how kind of starting the, the podcast in general gave me Brian, better appreciation I, for songs. I hate to cut you off, but I, I think you're making a really good point here. So why don't you why don't you talk about this for a minute? I'm going to put you in solo. And before I put him in solo, I'm putting myself in solo and telling you that I apologize that Brian's going to be in solo. And you got to listen to him for a minute. <laughs> there we go. I, I actually got to give you big props, man. Not many people would actually go to a barber that has Parkinson's. I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that is like, no, I mean, that's like that's giving back to the community. I think that's a great thing to do. <laughs> All right, well, now I'm putting you in solo for real. <laughs> now that I'm done fucking with you, talk, talk about this a little bit. All right, I, I love the musicality of this riff. Uh, it's one I liked before, but we've talked before about songs and albums and just facets of the band that before I was... I, I, I liked, but I had not um, really dug into that much. This song 
probably went from being, I'll say, a five to a six to to being a nine and a half for me for a song I would love to hear, see them play every time live. Love this song. And what's interesting is if you notice on this, and I think you kind of brought it up a little bit, James sounds like another James on here. There is some black and Metallica going on. He's channeling his inner headfield on some of those verses. And it works great against um, what they're doing with the music there. And I think it's a perfect song for the for the album cover. It fits it, you know, it's just, it is constantly evolving. It's constantly moving. Things are pushing and pulling back against each other. They're getting that great harmonic tension on all these riffs. And um, I would love for them to play this song every single time. I am going to predict that we will also get a constant motion in addition to getting a dark eternal night uh, for the first show back from Portnoy. I think it's going to happen. So you think we're going to get both of those? I think we're getting both of those. No shit. I really, really do. God damn. All right. See, again, we, we need we need to write this stuff down. And like we need to see how accurate we are in these predictions. Because I, I honestly, I would be shocked if we got two songs from Systematic Chaos. Yeah, I guess in hindsight, that's a little... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look at Aiken. Who... <laughs> Who knew you could get a haircut while riding a roller coaster? <laughs> uh, he's, he's down to his worst material, too, huh? Yeah, there so was go. I. <laughs> I don't have any left. That's all right. That's all right. You know. Uh... Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, I I think there's some great, great songs on here they could play, but I don't know. Man, two of them. Wow. I think we're getting um, two from this. We're getting two from Black Cloud. We're definitely getting two from Black Clouds. Definitely. I mean, that's his, you know, that's see, his I'm last with, album, right? Yeah, but see, I'm with Doug. Doug says, I bet we get none from this album. Yeah, that's, yeah. Now, the one thing I will say is that, you know, Doug and, you know, JG3 says, plus they have a heavy Portnoy presence for his first tour back. Um <laughs> <laughs> Michael, hey everyone, check out John's hair. <laughs> I swear, dude, I swear to God, I'm just, I'm just gonna jack it up and make it look like as dumb as possible. Going for like, seriously, you should, you should see my my driver's license picture. It's one of the greatest things ever. I'll have to tell that story before we go. But um, what you're, so you're saying, you're saying you could actually make it look worse. Oh, dude, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'm holding you to this now because, yeah, well, yeah, dude, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I purposely take really horrid horrid pictures for my driver's license to see if when i when i have to show a license for something at bars or you know sporting events or concerts or whatever like to see if people laugh when they look at it and i have succeeded admirably so but do you um, really do you really have to do that much work to take a bad picture oh I mean, believe you, believe me dude it's amazing really? it's amazing yeah i'll, I'll, just, I'll tell you how just so i think just um <laughs> jg3 <laughs> just wear a wig each show from this point on no jay my hair like if i if i like jack it up and go all all crazy with it like it'll do pretty much anything like it's you know if i if i had ever been like a touring musician i would have the best rock star hair ever because i could just throw a product in and it would go all in any millions of directions and just be crazy like a lot of guys want it to do but theirs won't mine will unfortunately i work in an office and mine won't lay down so there you go Actually, Chris Aiken does ask a good question, and it's not about John's hair. <laughs> right. The real question, will they play the Grammy song, and that's Alien, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, I don't see it. I don't see them playing a single song from the last album. Well, I don't or know. Do, if they, it's do they have to play at least one? Well, I don't know if it's it's if it has the, to the, be the, the from... last Mangini album, I'll say. I don't know if it has to be from the last record with Mangini, but I, I mean, I feel like the, I feel like they will not play anything from that album only because it was the last Mangini. And they're not going to totally ignore. And he said that that they can't. They got to play some of this stuff, right? Yeah. Um. I mean, J Jay makes a good point. He says they played the Alien every show on the last tour. I think they feel like they can give it a rest for this tour. I, see, I'm torn on that one because they chastity with another good point they had grammy nominations prior to mangini play those yeah okay well they didn't um, win though yeah but i mean it's you know they did get the nomination well, so, what was I mean, nominated before um i don't even know i guess god that's a good that's a good freaking trivia question 
Um, it's probably Alex, something live, no? Al- Alex Neal, yeah, I I completely agree with him. Probably breaking all illusions. See, I see, Brian. I don't think when it comes to Mangini songs on the new tour, I don't think that it. I don't think it matters what record it comes from. I think it matters the popularity of it. Like, I don't see them doing like deep cuts from the Mangini stuff. Uh, but I think you know, like Alex said, like breaking all illusions is one that like fans just never ignore. It's a, I mean, you and I are have waxed poetic about that song on the show how many times? Uh, you know, something like that. You know, well, like, that also feels like it could have came from the Portnoy era too, and I think we may have discussed this in the past. Yeah. If we haven't, it it has a Portnoy era feel to it, in my opinion. Yeah, I. I, I, they have to hit on it, but I, I, the question to me is like, and we'll get to our number one in a minute here, but the question to me is, you know, are they going to do it on this particular tour or are they just going to have this one solely be Portnoy stuff and then the next tour, okay, now we're going to sprinkle in the Mangini songs. Uh, no, they're, they're going to play a few Mangini. You'll probably get at least, I'll say... A minimum of three, maximum of four. Well, it depends on how many epics they're going to play, and are they going to do? Are they going to do like the evening with that? That's what they should do. There's no way. There, no? Dude, 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 James already came out and said like he can't. Well, you know, he's like, true. yeah, a lot of that older stuff I can't. I, I can't sing like I used to. So I mean, if he, you know, they're. I mean, they're not going to put him through a three hour night. Yeah, that's true. I guess. I mean, he, he, you know, he's saving himself. Like he's, he's, you know, adjusting vocal parts and everything. Um. You know, he's doing a great job of all that stuff and, and to and to then pile on instead of doing like, you know, two hours or an hour and 50 minutes or whatever the hell it is like, to, OK, let's do three hours. Like, OK, that's dude, you're going to destroy the band, just destroy the guy. Yeah, I didn't. think so, that. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, we definitely should do this, man. We, we need it. We need to set up a, you know, Dream Theater set list prediction show. So we, we should we should do that at some point. We'll have to figure out when to do it. But um, before we get to that show. We need to finish out this show, which means we each need to give our number one. And my number one is The Dark Eternal Night. Uh, you have been on record where the song is concerned many times as saying this is kind of like a juggernaut. It chugs, it drives. It's just one of those songs. They have many songs like this where you see it live and at the end you go, God damn, what the hell was that? Whoa. And, but I think this one is is at if not at the top of the list of the song like it starts out you're like yeah like oh my god holy fuck what the fuck like this song just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds oh my god it is dude this song is just fucking awesome and you know we 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 mentioned about this you know album earlier but this is one of those albums where there's a few more than a few things on here that they don't have anything else in the catalog that sounds anything like these you know some of these these songs or these 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 melodic choices or different things like that and the dark eternal light is is the prime example there's nothing else in the catalog that's like this you know i mentioned you know a couple times that you know in previous episodes that this is almost like it sounds like it could be like in a heavy metal cartoon it's got that kind of feel to it where there's that little bit of mirth to it uh even in the midst of this heavy brutal like kind of thing and it it all works it all just works you know there's the weird proggy shit there's the real heavy stuff there's the creepy like old school old timey piano part in the middle which which i always love when jordan goes into those really weird places um everything about this song is just perfect and as much as I love in the presence of enemies, part one, and even if you were to put part one and two together and you, it is one song, like I would still take the dark eternal light over those. So by here, but I just, I just think the dark eternal light for, at least for me works a hundred percent on every single level. It's one of my all time favorite dream theater songs. You know, I, you know, I, I'll say it again. I said it on the, on the, uh, you know, our deep dive when they opened the show with it, you know, on yep. you know that tour back in seventeen, it was like, "Are you kidding me? Like th- this is an opener?" <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> like, yeah, we got flattened it, from the start, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like you As, would uh, never picture that. Kale just said they said they're going to come out and they're going to flatten us. <laughs> yes, yeah, dude, without a doubt, man. 
Yeah, I mean, another thing too. I love the fact that it's like you know, it's about a pharaoh and an angry god or whatever, and all that stuff. You know, those this cool metal one hundred and one lyrics for that kind of for that kind of music. You know, it's just it's just it's just badass. You know, totally, totally agree. All right, so I got I got to get I got to get Tom's comment up here real quick before we get to your number one because this is this is going to be fans are all over the map on this song on our show. Tom says, "Just give me pull me under on the new tour. It's one of my go tos when I open the bar." Sets the mood for the entire night. It kind of blows my hair back just like it does John's. Now mine goes forward, man. Like, um, yeah, pull me under is that that's gonna be interesting. I've actually had a thought, Brian. And <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and crucify me. Um Chris they can flatten you. They already got John's hair. Sorry, I can't oh, I can't stop. Okay, look. <laughs> you guys got to give me credit for something. I could take you know, look. I could take a beating better than anybody because none of this is offensive. I think it's fucking hilarious. Like, at least you know I got I got to be giving credit for something. If you hate my hair, that's fine. But at least like you can you could fuck with me relentlessly about it. Um, yeah. So real quick before we get to your number one, I I have actually thought that I would not be surprised if they open the set on the next tour with "Pull Me Under." Yep. I could see that happening. It's like this is this is what started it all. You know, we're on a nostalgia trip. Hey, man, let's go back to where it all started right off the rip. I, so, I mean, I'm totally on board with that, man. I, I mean, the best song off of what most people think is the is the you know best album. We, we can you know argue semantics or whatever, but sure. I mean, <laughs> why the hell not? Yeah. <laughs> See, this is what I you know. This is what I was worried about. JG three. If they play "Pull Me Under" on the next tour, they can just pull me under. Please, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> well, they're they're gonna play it, so I don't know if they're opening with it, but I one hundred percent guarantee you, put money on they are playing "Pull Me Under." It, it's it's happening, dude. Tom Tom agrees. He said that's exactly what they're gonna do. And M Mike L, you're right. He says John loves it. He knows we're just fooling around, dude. That's exactly right, Mike. I mean. Aiken's well, not fooling around, and Brian is not. No, no, it, God, but, no. Let's not. You know. Let's be clear here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Aiken's actually defending me. This is rare. He says there's really nothing worse than the middle hair, that point between a good cut and where you want to get to. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to do something, dude. I'm sick of wearing a hat. What the fuck do you want? Like, well, he's God definitely damn. nowhere near that part where it's a good cut, and I, I don't know where say. it's. I don't know where it's going, but yeah. By I the way, Aiken, there let's, quickly. Yeah, Aiken, Aiken, we should we should pull up your your mullet picture if we want to talk about hair. So <laughs> that was that was awesome. So, all right, back on topic. So my number one is the Dark Eternal Night. You have one left, Brian. What is your number one? In the presence of enemies, part one. I'm gonna Hard bring to up. A, uh, I'm gonna bring up a point you brought up, which was I thought actually, even considering your hair, um, <laughs> no, you said coming off of Octavarium, and I actually thought the exact same thing the first time I heard this, because Octavarium, like it, not, it's not in my top few albums of theirs. I, I'll just say that. I just man, when they first track, just that riff. Oh my god. Yeah. First time I heard that, and I was like, oh, my God. I got goosebumps, man. So many killer parts and moods and use of dynamics. Uh, it was what about the four-minute part where they, they get the clean picked out thing, and it's echoing on the guitar. Yeah. And then that snare comes in dude, behind it, dude. I, was like, I mean, I'm, I, I get goosebumps every time that part comes on. I mean, I just think it's a killer use of, of that riff that just keeps coming and going back and forth here and, and and they don't make the song too long they could have made the song too long they did not and i think it's the perfect length yeah it's a perfect opener and i don't remember did i have did i put this number one when we did our i might have had this number one when we did our album openers if not let's go back and i'll put it there anyway <laughs> so okay <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, I just, I absolutely love this song. I would love to hear this this played every single time. They could actually open every damn um, show with this, and I'd be totally fine with it. I, I wouldn't care. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what you know. You know, as much as I love the Dark Eternal Night, and it's my number one. If you were to really force me, I really could put in the presence of enemies, part one. You know, at number one, and I, I, you know. I wouldn't fight you on it, so I don't think you're wrong. What what in Christ's name are you doing? Um, 
so yeah, I don't I don't think you're wrong. I I think see you're screwing around on camera. Now I have to put myself in solo, which makes my hair even more <laughs> prominent. So uh, prominent, I should say. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think you're wrong at all, dude. Like the song is awesome, and and like I mentioned a minute ago, it's one of those things where you know coming off of Octavarium and the 20th anniversary tour and all that kind of stuff. You know, the Octavarium record was a little, you know, I hate to use this word, but softer. And this sounds like the dream theater you 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 can't you came to hear. The dream theater you came to see. Like, yeah, okay, here we go. You know, it's it's pretty much ballsier than anything on the Octavarium record. You know, maybe parts of these walls, um, you know, uh it's definitely just everything you want. It's one of those songs also that, you know, you and I talk about where it's shorter than the length would tell you. You know, it's like six and a half minutes, whatever the hell it is. And it takes like it's like four minutes to get into it or whatever. However long it, it's longer than six minutes. But, you know, it, it takes a long time to get to the vocal. But it doesn't feel that way because it moves. You get into it like there's an energy to it. And I, I, I think it's it's just written so phenomenally well and uh, i i can't i can't fault you for putting it at number one man i mean that, that's why you know I, I i was i'll be honest i was really surprised that you didn't have dark eternal light at number one i know you love in the presence of enemies part one but you've talked a lot about how you really like the dark eternal night i was uh, number one i was surprised you had it you didn't have it at number one but i was way more surprised that you had it at number three well, a clarification too. It's actually nine minutes for uh, the first one, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's a little more. I don't know. It's it's a little more musical for me. Um, a little more progressive. Dark Turtle Nights, great song, heavy as hell. Uh, I think they stretch out a little more thematically and melodically on Presence of Enemies Part One. So, you know, I feel like I'm being taken. I don't know more. I mean, there's there's you definitely go for a journey, and you know. You know when you're listening to Dark Eternal Night, but I this I feel like Presence of Enemies, man. I just I just feel like I'm soaring on that song, you know, and I just yeah keep soaring higher and higher. I don't know. It just takes you to it takes me to a whole different place than anything on the album, and just just you know we call them earworms, ear candy, whatever you want. You know? <laughs> I would I always feel like earworms is a derogatory term because worms are like yeah. you, but yeah, I, ear candy. I'm like hell yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Johan. man oh man this is great <laughs> a aiken i can't bring that up because nobody nobody who lives outside of cleveland will understand that comment but it is a good one um johan alexanderson when they put this on apple podcasts john's new haircut is probably the most accurate title you know when i upload this later i probably should just to let all the audio viewers um again that's a term for my other show um let all the audio viewers in on the joke and like what the hell what the hell is he talking about um yeah so i, I, question... I, wish, I wish i was an audio viewer right now so. <laughs> god damn it it's not that bad um so all right have you listened to this song as a whole I mean, you can either do it by making a little playlist or then playing part two immediately after part one, doing the album version, or you can do, you know, the chaos in motion thing. No, I, you know? I, after you brought it up here, I will go, maybe not right off the episode, but I will go at some point this week and I will listen to the chaos in motion, the back to back. I want to hear that. I'm surprised that you haven't listened to it as, as one whole yet. It's, 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 dude, it's, it's cool because it's, you know, it's. I, I think I think it's the most underrated epic they have because they split it up, you know, because, you know, when, when you listen to it as a whole, OK, you get it, you know, but it, when you listen to it as separate songs, it, it's it's like unbelievably different. Well, they, they definitely seem disjointed. And I know at the end they go back to the theme. Well, of course, they're going to. I mean, that's, but, that's, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like when you split it in half, they sound totally right. disjointed. But when you put them together, it actually makes total sense. So. Well, I'll I'll listen to it and, and see if you're right. And this is you, so I'm, I'm assuming no. But <laughs> I think I think that I, guys in the chat, like, back me up here. When you listen to this as a whole, one cohesive whole, it makes total sense. 
Well, well, what I'm curious of is, will I have a better appreciation for part two? Not necessarily so much of seeing how they fit together, but will I like two more because it is with one? So we'll see. That's interesting because, man, that's really difficult because I, I could see it not making a difference. Because when you, I think it's part of the song that you don't get into. I think it's the weird, wonky, really dark crap. But I think when it gets to the back to the parts that sound like part one at the end, I think that's where you kind of like jump back on board. So I think you would just kind of see like the parts you're not into is like, oh, here's the wonky middle part. You know, it's 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 yeah. it's very, you know, to phrase it in in your terms, like Count of Tuscany esque, where yeah. that middle part where it just breaks into that acoustic part, which is and it does that for like three minutes or whatever the hell it is, like. It's out of the blue. And if you were to split that in two and the second part started at that acoustic thing, you'd be like, what's this weird, like, you know, it's mellow and, you know, whatever. Like, so I, I think this this song is a perfect example of that. It's it's like if you split the Count of Tuscany into two parts. So, well, this would officially know. be. This is longer than or is it right at chance? So this would be 25 minutes plus what's change of seasons, 23 or something. Yeah. So you're right in that territory then, I guess. Which that's, I mean, that, even for Dream Theater, that's, you know, <laughs> Count of right. Tuscany is 19. I mean, that's six minutes shorter. Yeah. So you're you're talking a serious commitment there. Even, even though the first one, I feel like, flies by. So, yeah, I'm going to check it out and see. Yeah, I think it makes a difference, man. I, I really do. I really do. I, I, I think you'll get an you know an added appreciation for it so um all right so <laughs> chris did the blue water turn black when you're guys okay, so is... that doesn't that doesn't make any sense chris did the blue water turn black when your guys scissors were put in it what what does that, that mean it makes perfect sense like at the old barber shop the guy has that that jar of blue water that the scissors and the comb are sticking out of so basically, a couple of, of, of uh, washed up fifty somethings are making blue water jokes from a barber. First, and rule, I'm of, first to, rule of improv and comedy, John, is you don't you can't use denial. It doesn't work. You have to play. Along. No, no, the joke makes no sense. Oh my god! You, 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 you know, you don't. <laughs> it, anyway, Aiken, you finally failed. You finally failed. <laughs> oh boy. That was a Neely joke. So, all Bar right. Barbicide. That's actually what it's called. Well, I know what it's called because I get my hair cut. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. But, like, what the hell is it? Ma turn black? What does that fucking mean? What the fuck does that mean? Anyway. I don't know. Um, so, obviously, we have to do our set list prediction show. We, we've determined that. We've got a bunch of great shit coming up. Uh, I think... We, we cannot confirm this yet, but we might have Jordan on again uh, sometime in the near future. He's got a new solo record coming out, so we've got that coming up. Well, let's quickly talk. Have you heard the single? I just heard it today. I actually have not. <clears throat> um, well, he has a singer on there. It's not him. It almost sounds like something that would be on the Astonishing. It's a piano ballad. Wow, and he it's, released that? Yeah, it is not a... Um, crazy way out there how many different weird sounds can i get out of a synthesizer and play some insane you know four different things going on at once yeah it is the most mellow i i if someone put that on and didn't tell me what it was i wouldn't know in a million years that it was from the new jordan ruda solo hop i'll put it that way yeah i knew it was out but i ha i have not listened yet <laughs> I, I liked it Dude. but i mean it's it's legit it sounds like uh something off of astonishing it's just a mellow <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I, I think I think Kale might have won the entire conversation, the hair conversation all night. <laughs> he says Barbicide is the crime that was committed on John's head. Okay. Oh my god. I'm I'm gonna from now on I'm gonna come to the show yeah. with my hair in a different Let, Let's talk about something different besides John hair, like like current events. Okay. How's oh it look right god. now? Jesus, that's Christ. an old Jerry Sitz, Gary wow. Shanley joke. Yeah. Oh God. All right. 
Chris Aiken, you're not wrong. He says, some Dream Theater fan hasn't listened to a month-old single. Yeah, I I cannot. Well, it's not I have Wolfgang. no excuse, man. I have no not, excuse. Uh, it's not Wolfgang Van Halen or Metallica, so. Oh, yeah, because Metallica is my go-to. <laughs> um, yeah, I, dude, it's weird. Like, I saw that it was out and everything, and I, I, for some reason, didn't listen. I just I, I but then again i also have not been listening to music lately i'm in the middle of a couple of massive projects at work which is where i listen to music and i just like music is just i can't well, i so, just chalked it up to your usual you know show prep which is well <laughs> nothing <laughs> <laughs> look hey i listen i listen i listened to our deep dive for this you didn't do that so up yours man well, maybe you so, should have been good, more concerned about your haircut than, than listening to the deep Jesus. dive. The more that I'm looking at this now. Oh, my God. You guys are. <laughs> I love it, man. Um, all right. So before before we jump to the story about, about my driver's license. Um, actually, we might as well just get into it. Fuck it. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> Wait, so, there's more? All right. So the wonky hair thing, like, again, I'm. You know, in the middle of growing it out, I'm just like fucking tired of wearing a hat. So I did something like it. You know, technically, there's pictures of this being stylish somewhere. Why it's stylish, I don't know, but whatever. So, but my driver's license, the last couple times I've had to renew it, I think they're good for what, like four years, whatever the fuck it is. So, the well, the one prior to this one, I was just like, I hate having my picture taken for it you always look stupid and I, I as i was waiting i was like you know maybe i should maybe i should like really look stupid so i went in there and i renewed my license and i'm like all right let's take your picture and i started going yeah i'm nervous do, do we have to like can you just use my picture from before They're like now nah, we've taken a new one i was like i i'm i don't like cameras i, I i'm nervous so I played this whole thing of like I was terrified of cameras, like it was a thing. So let me see if I can recreate the face. I'll put myself in solar, but <laughs> and <laughs> so I literally tried to again, like this the audio viewers are gonna love this, but I, I literally tried to do this, like just the freeze face of <laughs> and they're like, No, you have to look in the camera, you have to smile. And I was like, I've I'm really nervous right now. And and the poor lady, she was like, oh, sweetie, it's okay. Like she was trying to coach me through. And then I started feeling bad, which of course stopped me. Not at all. And so the, it ended up looking, I, I, I like pretended to smile and it was, it was like weird, but it basically looked like it was just the stupidest look. And it just looked unbelievably awkward and but they took it they're like okay good you nailed it so i would you know show my license at you know ball games and shit like that and at wherever i would go to show a license and people would like that's you i'm like yeah i'm yeah you know nervous in front of cameras my wife would get pissed because she knew what i did well this last time i was like my brother first of all thinks it's hilarious and if my if my brother thinks it's hilarious then i'm doing it same thing. If he if I think something's hilarious that he did, then he's doing it. Like we're idiots like that. And you know, that that's why we that's why we do the preeminent Star Wars nerd podcast on the planet, the Nerf Herder Council, live every other Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the weeks <laughs> I'm not doing talking into infinity. Um so the so when I had to get it renewed, I was like, okay, how am I gonna do better than this? So I had taken off you know, for my birthday, I think my birthday was on like a Friday or a Saturday or something. And no surprise here. I, I got just all kinds of drunk. So I woke up the next morning still feeling it. And I was like, fuck, man, I totally forgot. I got to go get my goddamn license renewed. I'd waited till the last minute and I'm still kind of feeling it. And I was like, ah, I better go shower. And I'm thinking in the shower, like, how the hell am I going to do better than that? So I get out of the shower. And my hair was actually long at this time. It was actually during COVID. So it was actually down to here, like, you know. Um, and so I toweled off and I get out. My hair is all kinds of in a fucking rat's nest, you know. And I'm looking in the mirror at this rat's nest. I'm like, that's it. So I took out the hairspray 
and I sprayed it like it, it was like literally imagine toweling yourself out. It looks like it, like everything's everywhere. So that's what I did. I, I sprayed it that way. Jumped into some clothes. I'm like, I'm and and my wife, she goes, you're not doing that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I am. She's like, please tell me you're not like it's not funny. And I'm like, see, that's the last thing you ever tell me. If you tell me it's not funny, I'm going to do it because that makes it funnier to me. And sure as shit, man, I drove off to the BMV and I walked in and I did it again. I was going through the line and they were like, they made me do the eye test. And my eyesight was a little blurry because I, you know, was a little blurry the night before. And I couldn't quite see a couple of the letters. And I was like, shit, I'm going to get like a ding on my license. Like I need to wear glasses to drive or something. And I went, I don't know my letters very good. And she was like, what? I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know letters. Well, I don't read well. <laughs> so she bought it and helped me out with the test. And then I got my picture taken, just looking like absolute garbage. And I, I had no expression on my face. That one, I looked like I was basically about to go into a coma. It was, it was, it was literally like this. It was like with my hair just absolutely everywhere. <laughs> and so that's what's been in my license. And I, I took a picture of it as soon as I walked out. I took a picture of it, sent it to my brother, and he just absolutely lost it. And literally every time I've handed it to somebody since then, this is like three years ago, whatever it was, two years ago, whatever, I get this. Like they look at my license and go, <laughs> they do that quick little laugh. I'm like, yes, success. <laughs> oh my God. So, yeah. So if you think this hair is bad, it's much worse on my driver's license. So, you know. I think stupid but, is definitely in your wheelhouse. I could see you, oh, you, dude. you pulling that off easily. Well, see, the problem with this whole plan is, what am I going to do next time? I mean, like, just, just be yourself. That's almost worse, to be uh, honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's about the only thing I could think of. Apparently from the chat tonight, I should just do my hair like this. It could be normal. Like, oh, that's the worst one yet. <laughs> yeah, look at Aiken. John proposed, and Steph said, that's not funny. Poor Steph. <laughs> Dude, Johan Alexanderson says, what seems to be the officer problem? <laughs> Johan, I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I I was thinking of the Peter Griffin thing where Peter Griffin got absolutely destroyed drunk and had his picture taken for his license so that when he got pulled over, hammered, he would look exactly like his license. I'm like, okay, we're going to let you go. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, so there's my driver's license picture uh, story. And uh, there's our ranking of systematic chaos. And there's a good, you know, 20 solid minutes of people shitting on my hair. So <laughs> this has been the most spirited episode of Talking Into Infinity almost ever. I'm trying to weigh listening to Ministry of Lost Souls or hear, have you retell that horrible story again about your driver's <laughs> license hair. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's closer than you might think. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> look, man, if, if, I, if I could show the picture. You would understand. You'd be like, holy shit. All right. He's not kidding. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Kale sending you photos. I hope they're appropriate for, yes. for podcasting. JG3, we should also mention how much of a disaster chaos and motion was. Before we jump out of here, Jay, explain. Why was it rough? Are you talking about like the audio quality or because I thought it was great. So I, I did not have a problem with it. But, that's the documentary, right? Uh, well, it's both. Or is that the concert? Well, the concert's on there too. Yeah, it's it's got it's got the, it's so it's it's the three CD and and two DVD release, uh, one DVD. I'm trying. I've got it over there. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, the audio quality on the CD release, like I, I guess I could clean it up a little bit, but I mean, I thought it was great, and that documentary makes the whole thing. You know what it's like to oh, be yeah. on tour, like to set up the whole tour and everything, like. You know what? In fact, I do have it. You have it. I loaned it to you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that that split second silence and the way you're looking around, like now I know I loaned it to him. <laughs> no, I, I've I've watched the yeah I watched the tour thing and the making of the album thing. I've watched both of those. All right. Well, at least you you've got my shit. So. All right. Well, I I think we've uh, done 
<laughs> done a good job of ruining another episode so why don't we jump out of here but uh man you guys in the chat are, are the all-time man thank all of you man johan alexanderson kale chastity jg3 mike l marilo i'm sorry bob alvez i hate to admit it but chris aiken uh man you, you guys god damn you guys are awesome man this is honestly like I don't mind you guys ripping on my hair and stuff like that. Like to me, this is exactly, exactly what what the fuck makes the show go, man. We love when you guys are a part of it and driving the stuff like that. I mean, this is this is so much fun, man. Brian, um, you're not nearly as much fun as the as the chat. I just want no, to you know that, but yeah, I know that. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, that's gonna do it for another episode of Talking Into Infinity, a Dream Theater centric podcast. We are going to be right back here uh, in two weeks. It will be Thursday. April 18th at 8 p or 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Excuse me. Uh, we were we are going to pick a topic of some type and we'll figure it out. Brian, we've got tons of stuff in the queue. So we have a, a list of topics that we want to do for the show. And we're I think we're now officially 33 that we have on on, on deck that we'd like to do. So uh, wow. got a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff to talk about, and uh, we'll be talking about one of those things coming up here in two weeks so uh, again all you guys in the chat you guys make the show go thank you so very much again if you are tuned in on youtube and you have not subscribed please click that like button click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time that we go live uh you can also do what chastity and johan alexanderson do and set an alarm on your phone for 7 30 p.m wherever time zone you're at uh and you know it'll let you know hey talking into infinity it's on, man. Let's 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 go with talking into infinity. So, uh, you guys are awesome, Brian. You are not Aiken. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, guys, this was a blast. We will be back in two weeks on Thursday, April eighteenth at seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, he is Brian. I am John. And guys, until next time, carpe diem. <laughs>